Hi, my name is Vivek Adhikari. I am your English instructor. In this class, we are going to study about the reading portion of Unit 19, that is, interpreting charts and tables. So let's begin. So we are going to study about interpreting tables and charts. As we all know, there are four different kinds of tables and charts, and we are going to study them one by one. So let's begin with the first one, that is, Right, the first one is called a bar diagram. A bar diagram consists of two different kinds of information. The first one is given in the x-axis and another one is given in the perpendicular axis which is also known as the y-axis. So we have two axes namely x and y and the information are presented in a rectangular form. So what we have here is a rectangular box. The first kind of information that is given in your book is name of the animals on the x-axis and name number of the animals on the y-axis. So let's assume if the number of the animals is 30 and if the animal is a cat, we can simply draw this bar diagram by plotting 30 on y-axis and simply elongating it along the x-axis so as to represent a cat. Let us, for example, take there are 20 number of dogs. So this represents 20 dogs. And let's say there are 50 number of pigs. So this bar represents the 50 number of sib. So this is what we call the bar diagram. We have x-axis and another axis called y-axis and information are equally presented on both axes. Now let us look at another kind of chart which is called as a graph. Like bar diagram, the graph also consists x-axis and the y-axis and the information keeps on varying. So we have different points for different information. And when we are done, so we have different points for different information. And when we are done with this, we simply plot the dots and draw a smooth freehand drawing. So the result is what we call the graph. This is a freehand sketch. This actually shows uh, the different kind of information like what is the length of the worm and the number of the worm. Let's say uh, the length of the worm is 4.5 centimeter in this case and the number of the worm is 2. So we have two worms of that length. So the number goes on increasing and finally there's a sharp decline. This is what we call the graph. Now let's look at another kind of chart which is called pie chart. It is rightly called so because it looks like a pie. What we have in a pie chart is a circle and this circle is divided into several different compartments as per the data that is given. So we are going to divide it into different segments. Let's say the number of students who want to study management is 35%. So we plot management as 35% here. Let's say the number of students who wants to study science is 40%, so we plot 40% here. Likewise, for arts, we have 15%, and for others, we have 10%. In this way, we have divided a 100% into several components, and likewise, we have shown it in a given pie chart. Always remember, a pie chart is calculated in a 360 degree, that means all the information has to be converted into degrees. Now the fourth kind of chart is called table and in a table we have different kind of information shown in vertical columns. For example, we have year and number of female and male students and total population of a given city, any, any kind of city or a town. So the year goes on increasing from 1995 to 2000 to 2005 and 2000, uh, 2010. So the common interval is five years. You must have noticed that population of both female and male also goes on increasing. Here, here we have 400, then we have 455, suddenly we have 575, and finally we have 625. Same is the case with number of female, number of male, it goes on increasing. The total is also increasing. By simply looking at a table, we can understand the trend of population increase. So it really helps us to find out the general trend of anything, any kind of data. The last kind of chart is known as flow chart. Right, this is the flow chart. And it is a flow chart for, you know, making potato fries. First, we have the potato. Then we sort out the best potatoes. So out of many potatoes, we sort out the best ones. Only the best ones are chosen. After that, we do all the washing thing that should be done. And from there, 
it goes to the chopping part and from chopping it goes right into the frying pan so we have frying and the final activity that is done is serving and serving after serving comes eating that is having so this is the complete flowchart for frying or making potatoes by simply looking at this flowchart we can understand what this flowchart is about and how the pattern flow follows did you notice the use of arrowheads and please remember to use these arrowheads this represents the beginning while this represents the end and all the information are included in a parallelogram sort of box right now we're going to start the reading first now we are here on the reading first the study time uh, I have roughly tried to sketch the given bar diagram this is the number of students of a public school in Ilam we have years on the x-axis and number of students on the y-axis the year goes on increasing from 2011 to 2012 up to 2015 while the number of students starts from 100 and ends up to 600 so this this first one shows the number of boys while uh, the second one represents the number of girls as I have given in the index this is what we have as an index of the bar diagram so let's move on now let's look at this bar diagram the above bar chart illustrates the comparison between different number of boys and girls studying in a public school in Ilam as we can see uh, there, there are now 600 boys in the beginning of the year while 500 girls in 2011 and the, this data is exactly reversed we have 500 boys and 600 girls in 2015 moving on let us now look at the exercise portion that is vocabulary in use we're going to find out the synonyms for different words the first one is portrays which means illustrate the second one is discloses which means reveals another one is escalated which means increased the fourth one is precisely which means exactly another one is called tendency which means trend and the last one is called stable which is constant now let us go to the reading comprehension part so the first question is the number of students in the school and the options are changed rapidly changed only in a few years was all the year, same all the years and if you look at the given graph we find out the answer is the total number of the students was always constant what that means is it was the same in all years then another question is the ratio of the boys and the girls in 2015 was for this question you need to do a little math go to the uh, go to the part of 2015 and find out the ratio of boys to girl that is the number of boys is 500 while the number of girls is 600 that turns out to be 5 is to 6 if you cancel out and do the math so the answer is the ratio of boys and the girls in 2015 was 5 is to 6. Another question is the number of girls increased. The first one is as much as the number of boys that decreased, less than the decreased number of boys, more than the number of boys that decreased. Let's do a little math. If you look at the given graph and find out the trend from 2011 to 2015, you generally find out that the number of girls increased as the number of boys decreased what that means is the answer is as much as the number of boys de that decreased so this is the last question of reading comprehension the data presented in the bar chart surprises us because the number of boys decreased every year or the number of girls increased every year or the total figure of the students did not change the first two options also seem correct but the right answer is the total figure did not change because the total number of students is always constant and that is 1100 so the answer is the total figure of the students did not change with this we come to the last portion of the exercise which is called answer the following question let's start with that the first question is what kinds of data are presented in the above bar diagram so what do you think well if you look at the bar diagram you generally find there are two different kinds of data they are year and the number of students number of boys and number of girls so we're going to write something like number of boys and number of girls are presented in the above diagram 
Data related to the number of boys and girls of a public school in Elam is represented in the above diagram. Now we can fill in the blanks. Let's look at another question. How many girls were studying in 2015 for that? You need to go to the section of 2015 and find out the number of girls in 2015, which turns out to be 500. So write down something like 500 girls were studying in 2015. So these are the final three questions. The first one is what was the number of boys that decreased every year? For this, we need to find the total number of boys that decreased with is 100. That is 100 number of boys that is decreased over a period of five years. So if you divide this number 100 by 5, what we have is 20. So 20 boys left school every year. Another question is what percentage of boys decreased over a period of five years? For that, you need to find the number of decreased boys, that is 100, divided by the total number of students, which is 1100, which turns out to be 0 0.9 if you do the maths and if you multiply this by the number 100 we have 9 percentage so roughly 9 percent of boys decreased over a period of five years and the last question is what might be the reasons behind the decreased number of boys and increased number of boys now this is a logical question you can give any kind of inference any kind of your reasoning i'm not going to give you the exact you know reason because there's no things as exact reason so this is the question that is related to reasoning and you need to use your own mind use a bit of creativity and give the answer so what might be the reason you need to give some reasons so maybe the boys left the school in order to work in the field and maybe the girls came to school because uh, you know the parents were encouraging uh, their, their female child to study in the school, something like that. That's not exactly the exact reason, but you can come up with good reasons like that. So I'm leaving this question to you. With this, we come to the end of today's class. Now, I want you to give some homework. In your homework, I want you to prepare a bar chart using the total number of boys and girls of your school. So go and find out the total number of boys, of go uh, boys and girls. For this, you can take the help of your teacher uh, or your headmaster or headmiss and find out the total number of boys and girls and prepare a bar chart. A bar chart, let me revise, is essentially a chart consisting horizontal and vertical components. It consists rectangular elements along x-axis and y-axis. So we have two axes and different kind of information like boys, girls, boys, girls. I want you to find out the exact number of boys and girls of your school and prepare a bar graph. With this, we have come to the end of today's class. If you have any question or suggestion regarding this video, feel free to write us at learning at .edu .np. Thank you.